I alone know the plans I have for you. Plans to bring you prosperity and not disaster. Plans to bring about the future you hope for. Hello and welcome back to Pruning to Prosper. My name is Gina Morton. Thanks for joining me again today. Today's story talks about how God has a plan for each of us. And that's the overriding theme of this entire podcast is what are you being called to do? Who are you being called to be? Ever since I was a little kid, there were a few things I felt were placed on my heart from God, things that I believed to be true. The first thing was I believed I was going to have five kids. The second thing I knew I was going to marry the boy of my dreams and not just marry the boy of my dreams, but I knew that our marriage was going to be really good and probably something that I was known for, or so I don't know. I just had this feeling in my heart that like, there's something about this guy and we had something to do together. And the third thing was that I was going to go through something pretty big. And I was pretty sure that this marriage was part of that and that we were going to go through something big together. So when I was dating my, my then boyfriend, now my husband, his name is Dennis. You will hear lots about him on this podcast. Um, I told him, I was like, yeah, we're going to have these. I don't know if I actually told him about the five kids, but I definitely told him that I always knew something big was going to happen. And we just kind of joked about it. We, he went with the flow of it all and was like, okay, whatever, you know? So in 2006, I quit my job as a pharmaceutical sales rep. So I could give birth to our first child and I would stay home with him full time. Our first little baby is Charlie and a little boy. He came into the world. And then, I don't know, I always thought I was going to be the mom of boys. I always loved boys. I babysat boys. And even though I went to an all-girls Catholic high school, I really hung around with all the boys. Like, I just gravitated towards boys. I just liked them better, I guess. I don't know. The older I've gotten, the more I've... Now I, I, I'm a big fan of, like, women. And um, I'm a cheerleader for women and all, all my friends I just adore. But... Um, Anyway, I just always thought I'm going to be the mom of boys. Like to have a girl never even occurred to me. So I had my first son and I'm very blessed that I, I got pregnant quite easily. So I was pregnant again in uh, early 2008 and on Easter Sunday, which happens to be the anniversary of the launching of this podcast, March 23rd, I actually looked up the date and I couldn't believe it because it's a bittersweet day. It was Easter Sunday of 2008. And we had just told all of our family that I was pregnant for the second time. And then unfortunately, the next day I miscarried. So it was it was a very sad time. But um, again, I was very blessed. And I was pregnant quite quickly by probably June of that year. And the church had just announced that it was the year of St. Paul was going to be June. I wrote it down June 29th, 2008 until June 29th, 2009 was going to be the year of St. Paul. And that just meant that we are focusing on the readings of St. Paul. um, And he's a a fascinating um, man of the Bible. If you don't know about St. Paul, I really encourage you to do some reading on him. And I will definitely talk about him in future podcasts. But anyway, I was in my backyard and I tend to pray when I'm just going about my daily life. Like I'm not big on a morning routine of sitting down and doing an hour, an hour and a half. Like I'm more of like praying as I'm washing dishes or I'm cleaning or just driving, whatever. So this day in particular, I remember I was in the backyard and I was gardening and I just said, God, you know, I would love a a son, like give me a son. And I will name him Paul in honor of the year of St. Paul. So fast forward to December of that year, it was a very cold night and 
lots of excitement <laughs> around this coming of this baby. But uh, just to give you the, the Cliff Notes version of the story, I got to the hospital at 1014 and at 1021, I was holding the baby. <laughs> so it was very quick, very, very quick. Um, so it was another boy and I was so excited and we named him Theodore Paul and we were gonna call him Teddy. So from this point forward, you will hear him referred to as Teddy. So we've got two boys at this point, Charlie and Teddy. And um, Teddy was beautiful and perfect to me, except he was born with what they call a blueberry muffin rash. So he was covered head to toe in little black and blue marks. Um, that he pretty much looked like a polka dotted baby. Um, but I didn't, I didn't, I saw it, but I didn't. Like when I look back at the pictures, I'm like, wow, now wonder everyone was freaking out. But I really, from the moment he was born, I just felt so calm. Um, and I can only describe it as the hand of God or the peace that transcends all human understanding. And people would be like, in days to follow, they'd be like, she's in shock. Oh my gosh, what's the matter with her? She just doesn't understand it. And I'm like, I can hear you. I'm, I'm not in shock. I, I get what's going on. I understand how serious this is, but I knew it was going to be okay. Um, so anyway, you know, they take care of me and they take the baby up to the neonatal intensive care unit, otherwise known as the NICU. And my husband went with the baby. And, um, you know, by this time, my mom had gotten there and stuff. And uh, one of the first things they thought it could be was maybe chicken pox. And I wasn't really worried because I actually sold the vaccine for chicken pox um, when I worked as a pharmaceutical sales rep. And I knew that a woman could have a full blown case of chicken pox in utero and or the baby could have it, not the mom. Um, and just come out with scarring. So I thought, okay, no big deal. He's, he's got scarring. And that was kind of the first thing that was planted in my head. So I kind of took it and ran with it. But later that night, they took me up to the NICU in the wheelchair. And there was this huge semicircle of healthcare professionals. And they were all staring at me. And they said, your child has a very high white blood cell count which, you know, your white blood cells come out when they're fighting something. So they said, uh, yeah, in fact, they're the highest any of us has ever seen. So his little body is definitely fighting something. We just don't know what. And the, the polka dotted black and blue marks coupled with the high white blood cell count, my mind went right to cancer. And I said, isn't that a sign of cancer? And they all just stared at me and they were silent. And I knew, I knew it was cancer, but what I really knew at my core was that this plan that God had placed on my heart as a very young child had begun. My husband hates when I use the phrase, it's go time, but I knew it's, it's go time. Like whatever I have been called to do and whatever my husband has been called to do, whatever our marriage has been called to do, it has begun. And so we just, we got through that night. Um, our pastor came and baptized him because they really didn't think he was going to live through the night. He was only the 31st case ever of what they call congenital leukemia. Uh, so of the, the babies that came before him, 15 had lived and 15 had died. So he was going to tip the scales one way or the other. So that night, um, everyone left and, but actually I had a midwife deliver my first two kids and she came back to the hospital and we just sat in the dark and we had the most wonderful conversation. And I just felt so calm and I just kept telling her like, it's going to be okay. Whatever this is, it's going to be okay. And the next day a doctor did come and confirm that it was in fact cancer. 
they just didn't know which type there's, uh, they had it narrowed down to two different types, one that they could treat at our local hospital and one that they could not treat at our local hospital. So they were just doing a few more tests and they were going to find out. Um, and, you know, I just kept coming back to the St. Paul and how he, he had his great conversion and, um, you know, he was blinded by the light and knocked off of his horse and um, because he had been criticizing Jesus and, you know, speaking out against him that, you know, he wasn't uh, who he claimed to be and just horrible things. But when he had his great conversion, he converted and he became one of the greatest apostles of Christ ever, right? Um, and his letters in the Bible are just amazing. You know, most, most times it's our first reading uh, of the mass. And I just knew it was all part of God's plan that we got this little baby just as he was. And we named him Paul and that he was going to change hearts and he was going to bring people to God. And my mission and my husband's mission, we weren't quite sure yet, but I knew there was more to come. And so when they finally discharged me from the hospital as if it was a regular birth, instead of taking the baby home, we went home to pack because we were gonna get transferred to a hospital that was about an hour and 15 minutes west of where we lived. So they couldn't treat him. They did, they did confirm that it was acute myeloid leukemia, AML, um, and it had to be treated at a different hospital. So when my husband and I were driving from the hospital to our house to pack, it was really the first time that we were alone. And he said to me, do you think this is it? Meaning the thing that we've always talked about. And I said, I don't know, but I think it's part of it. And I will go on to tell you all of this story as the podcast you know, develops in the months and years to come. Um, but it's definitely a story I will come back to. But it is a story of God knows your every worry. And he has already planned for that. And he has already made everything perfect. And your, your worries of how is this going to happen? You know, like my first thought when they were transferring us, you know, I just, you know, your very first thought is do whatever you have to do to, to cure my child. Your second thought, you know, at least mine was, oh my gosh, how are we going to pay for this? You know, like medical debt is what cripples people. It, you could be bankrupt overnight, no matter how frugal you've been, how much you've planned, like this could be it. And I just, all I could think was, oh my gosh, we've worked so hard. We've planned so hard. And like, now I'm not going to be able to the stay at home mom and like all these worries are going through my head. And I didn't need to worry because God had all the details planned out perfectly. So in the next episode, I will continue the story with one of the first miracles of the birth of this baby and God's plan um, unfolding before us and how God's plans really are way better than we ever could have planned for ourselves. And while they may not be what we would have chosen, it is always for our best and the miracles that can come from trusting fully in his plan are just unbelievable. So I will see you next time. And I'll continue this story with some of our early days at the next hospital and some of the miracles that started to unfold right away and how we were prepared as best we could have been financially and um, spiritually. And uh, we were just really blessed with the timing. I mean, God's plan is always better and his timing is always perfect. So thank you for listening today. I hope you have a wonderful afternoon, evening, week, until I see you again. 
God bless you.